Random J Productions presents the Palm Summer League. Tonight, we once again come to the Daytona National Speedway for this year's running of the summer's biggest race, the Firecracker 400. After an eventful Firecrack week full of storylines, 35 drivers are all lined up on pit road, just moments away from a chance of history and glory. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Josh, your commentator for tonight's exciting race. And for the second year in a row here in Firecrack Week, we had two dual races, with dual number one providing us with another nail-biting finish to the line, with the driver coming out on top of that finish being the 33 of Patrick Miller. The 33 has to have one of the fastest cars on the grid here tonight, as in addition to his dual win, he was also fastest during opening practice, as well as 16 fastest in the following practice session. However, Miller was also tied as having the slowest three-lap average out of all the fast six drivers from Monday. Then there's the 88 of Anthony Hernandez. So far, Fire Creek Week has shooted both Hernandez drivers well, as in addition to Anthony's father Johnny Hernandez scoring the pole, the younger Hernandez scored the victory in duel number two, as well as securing a fourth place starting spot here tonight. A win here tonight will not only help out the former Golf Summer Series champion out in the point standings, but also check off the last remaining crown jewel for Hernandez racing the win. Now there's one driver here tonight that's won this race before and is starting right behind the pole sitter, the 40 of Nick Sands. Strangely enough, this will be the first time any former Firecracker winner will have a chance to defend her win from the previous year. And with Nick Sant being one of the best drivers as of late at the Super Speedways, he is one driver you definitely can't count out. And lastly, there's the current points leader of Bubble Pop making her first firecracker start here tonight. After starting off the summer with finishes of 6th and 1st, the driver of the 18 finished an underwhelming 22nd place at our last race at the Meadowlands and is going into the night just a single point above 2nd place driver Matthew Hill. The Firecracker 400 has proven time and time again to provide an exciting but also a rather chaotic race. And before we see what this year's edition has in store, let's first take a look at our starting lineup and pre-race ceremonies. So on the pole is the 46 of Johnny Hernandez, and next to him the fellow Chevy, Roberto Crown Jr. in the 31. Row 2, defending Firecracker winner Nick Sand in the 40, and next to him, dual number 2 winner Anthony Hernandez in the 88. Row 3, for the native Matthew Burnett. Next time, dual number 1 winner, Patrick Miller in the 33. Row 4, 2020 GSS champion, Kellen Baker. Next time, Skyler Taylor in the 29. Row 5, channel veteran, Brad Ream in the 6. And next to him, the 99 of Alex Santavala. Row 6, Matthew Hill, who of course came to this race second in the point standings. And next time, the 57 of Jack Haas. Row 7 got two Dodges, Nathan Stapleton in the 97, and the 06 in Madison Chase. Row 8, Jordan Stout in the 11, and current points leader Bubble Pop in the 18. In row 9 is the number 9 of Lipsy, and next to him, Jose Angel Gutierrez, who of course won our first Super Speeder race early this year at Tennessee. Row 10, the 41 of Philip Torres, and next to him, the 84 of Jason Albert. Row 11, Alex Bowen in the 1, and next to him the 59 of Caleb Rose. Row 12, Dan Mattiello, and Kyle is just trying to 19. Row 13, Dylan Matthews in the 49, and Ross McTrain fresh off his one from the Meadowlands a few weeks ago. Row 14, the 53 of Random J, and Joe T in the 8. Row 15, Riley Spurling in the 28, and Jordan Forbes in the 61. Row 16, Daniel Voiles, who finished second in this race last year. And next to him, the 24, Keyshawn Richardson. In row 17, we've got two former summer champions, Ryan Wilson, the 48, and the 37, of Brendan Beal. And finally, row number 18 is last year's Firecracker pole sitter, Brady Carruther is in the 20. And now it's time to see who the number bot thinks is going to win this race. And it thinks number 28, Riley Spurley for NS Racing, who will start 29th in his first Firecracker 400 start. And now it's time for a period ceremony starting with our national anthem.
and now is the moment everyone has been waiting for in the sold-out crowd. The most famous horse in motorsports for this year's edition of the summer's biggest race. Say it with me. Drivers, start your engines. Taking a brief look at the track info here for the night's race. We're going to go 42 laps on this two and a half mile long trial for Super Speedway. We're 31 degrees of banking in the corners. And as for the weather here tonight, Daytona Beach is a clear 76 degrees Fahrenheit with 10 mile per inch towards the southeast. Now, of course, this is our fifth firecracker on the channel for some drivers here tonight. It's their very first attempt and very first try at winning this race. While for others, they've been in multiple, yet are still trying to win this race. And we're going to talk to a driver who's raced in every single one so far, yet has yet to get their first win. Hey, Jason Albert, Josh, up in the booth, got a copy? Yeah, I got you. Hey, man, you've been in every one of these firecrackers we've had so far. What would getting your first win here tonight on the channel mean to you? It would mean a lot to get the win here. I've been trying to do that for a couple of years now, and we've been close a couple of times. Then there's your time for luck hasn't gone our way, but I feel confident tonight. All right, man. Um, have fun out there. Uh, good luck. Happy 4th of July. Thank you. Happy 4th of July. This track, this race has always been one to circle every single year in the calendar. And in the next 42 laps, you will see exactly why this is called the summer's biggest race as this sold out crowd is all on their feet, ready for the start of the 2024 Firecracker 400. And already there's Nick Sant making a three wide for the lead down the back straight away, forcing Hernandez to the middle, going into turn number three. And finally enough, there you see Anthony Hernandez moving down to the racetrack to help out his father. But as a result, Crown is left completely out to drive for himself as he continues to turn his three and four. Coming to complete the first lap here in the 2024 Firecracker 400 is Lasher's winner picking up where he left off with Nick Sant leading lap number one. Now you can see this pack is still two by two through turns one and two. With Crown still stuck on the outside, still being three wide. Patrick Miller now in the middle, and Stapleton to his outside. But now off turn number two, continuing down the back straight. Nick stands practically all by himself on the racetrack. With the only other driver being even somewhat close to him, being the six of Brad Ream, as his contact between Staple and Stout. And Staple's already going four wide into turn number three. And that move from Staple is not only very risky, especially this early into this race, but also very, very reminiscent of his move last year at this very race that ultimately caused over half the field to get torn up. But for now, off the tribe with a lot number three, Nick Sant still leaves with Brad Reeb in second, and Matthew Hill in third. If Hill now looking to the inside of Reeb in the turn number one, trying to force Brad into the inside. The Florida native was up from the 21 to Kellen Baker behind on the inside as he now tries to force Nick Sant to the middle of the track, and he will. Nick Sant and Hill side by side off turn number two. Looks we'll like Nick Sant will maintain the advantage on the outside, but Baker's now going to take matters in his own hands, forcing Hill to the middle as there's potentially going to be three wide for the lead once again into turn number three. And both Hill and Baker got a strong run that time by, but with help from Stapleton, Baker's going to ground both drivers with ease going into turn number four as his inside lane is quickly forming. Off of four, Baker is going to go to the middle to block Matthew Hill. Stapleton wants to get moving up the track beside Hill as a once again four wide coming to lap number four. Four laps in and already two instances of four wide as there's contact between Stapleton and Whipsy that time by off the trioval. 
And it looks like everyone up front is still trying to get this mess all sorted out through turns one and two. Before Baker moves up to the outside in front of Dixant, well, Stapleton settles to the middle in front of Hill. So already just four laps in, we've had two instances of four wide, and both those instances involve Nathan Stapleton. And if you add in the context from last year's Firecracker, I would imagine that 97 is probably the last possible driver you want to see next to you in this large pack, unless if you're one of his teammates. But ironically, as I say that, one of Staples' drivers, Phil Torres, will come to lead lap number four, as both him and Alex Moe move down to the inside in front of Dylan Matthews. And sticking with the topic of aggressive drivers, another one of them has come up on the inside, that being the 53 of Random J. I see pretty much everyone in this pack is all 3x3 three three now, like, like we've seen in the last several years here at Daytona. And even though just five laps in, we can see some of the drivers who started up towards the front, already towards the back, the Hernandez drivers as well as Roberto Crown. But continuing down the back, Sanu, you can see both Torres and Mullen move to the outside. Matthews to the middle. Oh, here's Random Fast approaching on the inside into turn number three, as he's going to make a three wide once again for the lead. He has help from the 20 of Riley Spurl behind, as well as the old one of Daniel Voiles, as Mullen nearly smacked the wall that time by going into turn number four, as we're still three wide for the lead. And now coming to the trial board to complete lap number five, Random J will lead this time by. Now, of course, Random is still looking for his first full points paying channel win since 2021. Most funnily enough, came in a super speedway in Florida at Orlando. In addition as well, his team Aero Atlanta has not won a race in the last two years. With the last coming from Jordan Stout over two years ago at Armory Digital, yet another super speedway. But down the back this time by, Random's going to move to the outside in front of Matthews, where Spurley settles at the middle in front of his teammate Stapleton. But into three, Random's going to come back down in the middle to block Spurley. We've the inside still completely open for Daniel Voiles. As here comes that strong run, the inside always gets off turn number four, as Voiles is going to force Spurley to the middle, as well as Matthews. But instead, Random still holds his ground in the middle, as well as Spurley, before Random moves back down to the inside, coming to lap number six. Going into turn number one, as a lot of the drivers who started up front are now towards the back of the pack. The drivers who started towards the back of the pack are now right up front, like Ross McTrain in the 45, the Fednik Series champion Brendan Beal, and Brendan Carruthers in the 20, with those latter two drivers starting 34th and 35th respectively. Now, of course, this type of field shuffling isn't anything new at these super speedways. Which means that even the drivers right now that are towards the back of the pack will have another chance, as long as they save the rest of this draft to get back up towards the front. And the key to winning these type of races is the time we move to the front perfectly. And with how long and chaotic this race typically is, finding that right time to make your march to the lead is easier said than done. On board the back bumper of Random as he continues to maintain the lead off the trival and going into turn number one. And one driver that is hungry for this lead right now is the 20 Brady Carruthers as he got a strong run on the inside off turn number two as he's going to force Beal to the outside or Brado settles with the middle. Now looks like going into turn number three, Random is right between both drivers where Random moves down on the racetrack trying to block Carruthers. But Random didn't complete the block fully as now Carruthers is going to force Random to the outside as those two are going to be side by side for the lead. Off of four, the two channel veterans trying to end their multi year long winter streaks are side by side for the lead, coming to lap number nine with Carruthers barely beating Random to the line. Just mere inches separate the two drivers coming to the line that time by. But Random settles with the outside in front of Beal going into turn number one. A random teammate Keystone Richardson for his briefly behind Carruthers before he moves to the middle. Of Carruthers now having a seven coin length gap over the next closest driver being Dan Mattiello. Now going into turn number three, Bredo and Richardson both are on the outside in front of Random for Bredo moves back down to the track trying to block Dan Mattiello's run through turns three and four as Bredo continues to surprisingly maintain his gap over the rest of the field. Now speaking of gaps, that's definitely been the case for the last five drivers in this pack, consisting of Bubble Pop, the points leader, Santa Valla, Joe T, as well as the front row sitters of Johnny and Crown. And I'd imagine these drivers are doing that just so they can maintain a safe distance over the rest of the field, as, of course, one simple mistake could cause over half the field to be in the garage area.
We know continuing down the back center where Matt Tio and Carruthers are side-by-side -side for the lead. Here's Jordan Forbes now looking to the inside of Matt Tio into turn number three before Matt Tio comes out with the block to 61. But right behind Forbes is his Beacon Mopar teammate of Kyle Rissus trying to 19. And if you recall back to the duel race, that being duel number one, those two teammates were right behind each other working with each other for a seemingly decent portion of that duel race. But off the tribal here in lap number 11, Carruthers and Matt Taylor is still side by side for the lead and that will continue going into turn number one with Matt Taylor once again blocking Forbes on the bottom. And that move's gonna cause Forbes to be right beside Carruthers in the middle as on the inside, his son's trying to make a three wide for second behind Matt Taylor. Continuing down the back straightaway, Matt Taylor's down the middle, potentially open door for Sustry to have another strong run on the inside, but into turn number three, both Matt Taylor and Forbes come down in front of the 19. And coming to lap number 12, Matt Taylor back to the middle once again in front of Forbes. As despite being up front for the last several laps, Matt Taylor will lead his first lap here tonight. In the turn number one, Matt Taylor's gonna move to the outside in front of Carruthers as well. Forbes moves back down in front of Sustry as the two Dodge drivers are gonna be side by side for the lead through turn number two. It looks like off two, Forbes will clear Matt Taylor for the lead. And as we're on board of Sustry, continuing down the back straightaway, these two teammates continue to remain nose to tail for another much like in the duels and earlier today, as Sustry actually gave Forbes a bit of a bump draft that time by going into turn number three. And that strong momentum on the inside will continue for both Beacon Mopar drivers off turn number four as both teammates as well as Matthew Burnett moves to the middle in front of Matthew Hill for all three of them move back down to the inside coming to lap number 13. All three of them there were briefly on the outside of the one as here's Sustry now looking at the inside of fours for the lead. Now, even though good teamwork is a great quality to have basically anywhere you go, but at the end of the day, this is still a competition with both Forbes and Sestray equally as hungry as the rest of this field to win this Firecracker 400. These two teammates remain side by side for the lead through turns three and four with Caleb Rose now fast approaching on the inside as he's gonna shuffle both Ryan Wilson and Max Burnett to the outside and middle. Coming to complete lap number 13. Let's see which Beacon Mopar driver will lead this lap. Looks like Sustra is really going to beat his teammate back to the line. These two remain side by side for the lead once again to turn number one with Rose again fast approaching before Sustra blocks. And it looks like Sustra and the two will remain committed to the inside while Forbes is thinking about either the middle or the outside for settle with the outside off turn number two and down the back. But as I say, that looks like Sosha is going to move to the middle in front of Wilson. Once again, making Caleb Rose and Anthony Hernandez as the two lead drivers on the inside. Into turn number three, comes another strong run from the 59. This time he's going to make a stick as they're three wide once again for the lead through turns three and four. Meanwhile, towards the middle of this pack, you can see drivers basically ditching the outside lane. And only settling with the middle on inside as they come to lap number 15. Looks like Caleb Rose will lead this time by. And as you can see, drivers who are up towards the front, not even five laps ago, like Richardson, Beal, Random, are back towards the back of the pack right now. While other drivers like Santa Valla and Bubble are making way back up to the front on the inside as here's Hernandez now forcing Rose to the middle as we're once again three wide for the lead into turn number two. And this time, Anthony Hernandez getting a strong run on the inside. But down the back, Hernandez is going to move to the middle with absolutely no help whatsoever. As here's a strong runner from Bradley Ream with help from Gutierrez in the turn number three. As we're once again three wide for the lead. And while basically half this pack is all three by three, the drivers once again towards the back of the pack. All two by two as we come off turn number four. Bradley Ream will clear Hernandez for the lead and go to the middle to block the 88 car as we come to lap number 16. Bradley moving every which way off the tribal, trying to block any potential momentum from any of these lanes. But unfortunately, that play is not going to work as there's Gutierrez now side by side of Reed for the lead. Jason Albert is the driver behind Gutierrez as we remain side by side of Albert off turn number two as we come to a very special edition of Palm Summer League Crank It Up.
behind once again here at lap number 22. Past the halfway point here in the 2024 Firecracker 400. That's Phil Torres in the 41 near a week of contract with Santa Valla. This is the third time here tonight we've had an instance of four wide and the second involving an NS Racing driver as was still four wide through turns three and four. There you see Jotin Hernandez trying to move up the track to give Santa Valo and Torres some room, which will actually work off turn number four as we once again over another very scary four wide situation. But off the travel that time by, McTrain tried to come down to the inside walk Alex Mullen, but instead opts to go to the outside lane in the turn number one, as Mullen and McTrain are going to be side by side for the lead. And finally enough, the driver behind Mullen on the inside is his own driver of Nick Sand back inside this picture. Now, of course, in addition to Nick Sand's one from last year, RC Motorsports has won this race twice, with the first time coming from Nelson Reeves back in 2021 as Moe now goes to the middle into turn number three, with Nick Sant remaining on the inside as a once again three wide for the lead. Coming to the travel once again, the lap number 24, Nick Sant's back to the lead here in Daytona with Matt Tiello and Lipsy being the other two drivers on the inside. Once again in the one, McTrain is still stuck in the outside lane as the two RC drivers make up the low lines as there's contact between Spurling and Carruthers. Keyshawn Richardson is fast approaching on the inside. Spurling needs to get off of Bredo quickly to prevent another potential four wide situation. It looks like he will. And my goodness, yet again, even though that didn't go four wide that time by, I will still consider it as another close call, the fourth close call we've had here tonight of someone going four wide. And I would imagine for a lot of these drivers and their crews, it is stressing the absolute hell out of them, the fact that we've had four instances of four wide, or at least being close to four wide here tonight. But coming back to the trial of the lap number 25, where Nick Sands still lead as there's nearly contact between Maxiel and Lipsy. But those two affiliate teammates will fortunately stay off of each other for now. And as we're on board with the back bumper of Nick Sant going into turn number one, he moves to the inside. As here's Calvin Baker fast approaching into 21. We fell for the fellow Pontiac of Random J now back inside this picture. And Nick Sant that time by tried to block Baker, but Baker is there on the inside as the two veterans are going to be side by side. Continuing down the back straightaway, Baker is trying to move to the middle in front of Torres, but Random knows exactly what he's doing. He's looking to the inside of the 21 into turn number three, as we're once again three wide for the lead. Random was briefly wide up against Baker, trying to get some air off the 21, and that's going to work off turn number four. Random J back to the lead in the 53. I'm not really too sure if Baker is quite happy with that, since Random and Baker are two of only five Pontiacs in the grid. And I would imagine just because there's so few Pontiacs in this entire field, they probably try to work as close as they can with one another, especially compared to the other manufacturers. Bogardo is off too, Random is back to the point as he moves to the outside in front of Baker, or Daniel Voyles, who's on the inside, moves in front of Santa Valla, making the two titles of State Taylor and Crutters as the two, oh no, contact, Voyles, Baker, as well as Torres and Nick, Santa Strang goes back to yellow, and the rest of the field into turn number three. This is going to be a big, big wreck. Jordan Stout, Ross McTrain, Matthew Burnett, Phil Torres is on his roof in the 41. And as Torres lands on this roof, you can see some of their drivers involved in this. Coward Sus try. Ross McTrain, Jason Albert, second in points, Matthew Hill, and Alex Santavala. Some of our drivers also involved in this potentially. Brad Reeb in the six. I see damage on the one of Alex Moan, especially to that front end. On the nine of Whoopsie also has damage as well. And there you see a close look on Alex Mullen's car. He's more than likely done for the night, as well as the damage to the defending Firecracker winner. My goodness, yet again here in the Firecracker 400, we see a massive, massive wreck just past the midway point of this race. That involves a lot of big name drivers and will definitely have ramifications for the entire point standings. And just like I mentioned earlier, all it took was that one mistake. And someone, when you look at the replay, made that one mistake that ultimately caused a lot of good race cars and a lot of good drivers to have torn up race cars and, more, and, more, and be more than likely done for the night.
But anyways, looks like that time by the 53 of Random J was your leader, followed by the 29 of Skylar Taylor, Daniel Voiles in the L1, Brandon Crudders in the 20, and Riley Spurley in the 28. And it looks like pretty much everyone is coming down pit road this time by. Now, if that wreck did not happen, if this race still stayed under green flag conditions, this would probably be around the time drivers would come in anyway. As, of course, this race this race is a lot longer compared to the summer kickoff at Tennessee. You see Random Jay's in the stall in the 53. Looks like he's doing at least right side tire, tires. Skyward Taylor's in their stall as well as Calvin Baker. You see Patrick Miller's just ahead of Baker as well, getting it into his stall. Alex at the foul also behind these two, of course, trying to get damage assessed to his car. As you see now, Random is getting around both Taylor and Baker as he's done with his pit stop. It looks like Random will win the race off pit road of ease, with Boyles being second, Karate is in third, Urgerson in fourth, and Taylor all the way down to fifth. So definitely not a good pit stop for that 29 crew as they lost three positions just like that. But anyways, let's take a look at the instant replay to see what caused this massive wreck going into turn number three. So Alder started down the back straightaway up towards the front of the field. The four drivers to watch on your screen is the 01 of Daniel Voiles, the 21 of Cowan Baker, the 41 of Phil Torres, and the 40 of Nick Sant. So it looks like there was contact with Torres and Voiles that shoved Baker and Nick Sant into the wall. And then out of panic, Matt Taylor tries to swerve to avoid, but instead goes spinning right in front of the entire field behind him. With a lot of these drivers having absolutely nowhere to go, with hard hits all around, with Torres going on his roof several times in the 41. Okay, here's a better angle from up above. As it looks like Torres clipped the right rear of Voyle, sending him into Baker, Torres into Nixon, with both the 40 and the 41 coming down in front of the 9. You know, Torres comes back onto the racetrack in front of Matthew Hill, who's trying to avoid, but then comes back on the track in front of Brad Ream and Kyle Sustry, and Sustry sent Torres tumbling several times in that turn 3 apron. Which, come to think of it, it's a little bit ironic that the Superman car goes up in the air here tonight. On board of Daniel Voyle, to see his point of view. Yeah, Torres definitely clipped the right side of Daniel Voyles' car. Fortunately for Voyles, and unfortunately for the rest of the field, was able to save it. On border for Oscar Train. Yeah, he was possibly in the worst possible place to be in at these type of wrecks, right up against the wall on the outside lane. Absolutely nowhere to go. Tough break for the 45 team here tonight. On board for Berto Crown, who was towards the back of the pack, specifically to avoid this type of carnage, and does he miss it? Oh my god, I think he does. I think he went between four, maybe even five cars there to avoid a great miss there for the driver of the 31. So take a listen to slow motion. So again, Torres clips the right rear of Daniel Voyle, sending him into Kellen Baker. Oh, Nick Sant behind him goes into the wall, while Lipsy was just right behind both Torres and Nick Sant. While Dan Mattiello also got hit by Lipsy, got sent into the wall, and comes down in front of Alex Mullen. And that's really all the chaos unfolded from behind. A lot of these drivers have an absolute nowhere to go. Patrick Mill getting damaged in the 33. Alex Bowen being back into the wall. Dalen Matthews getting damaged as well. Jose Angel Gutierrez barely avoiding in the 79. Or I think Madison Chase also barely misses, uh, barely misses, if not gets very minor damage in the 06. Caleb Rose misses as well. While Brad Reeb and Kyler Sushra looked like he initially had it missed. But unfortunately, a little later, they were caught up in the Phil Torres part of the wreck. Matt Burnett also damaged in the two car. Jordan Stout also going for a spin in the 11, while Nick Sant right up against the wall trying to avoid getting any additional damage. <laughs> there is see Roberto Crown going four wide, right in between Forbes and Joe T. As those three, as well as Johnny Hernandez and Bubble, all avoid getting any damage if Anthony Hernandez barely avoiding Ross McTrain there. Anyways, under caution for the first time here tonight in the 2024 Firecracker 400. As we'll be right back with you guys after this. The next race for the Palm Summer League will take place in Paris, France, just days before the opening ceremony of the Summer Olympics for the UPS Summer Special, as well as the channel's special 100th race. And I'll be on this channel the day after the Brickyard 400, July 22nd, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, barring any delays. Meanwhile, here at Daytona Beach for the 2024 Firecracker 400, we're about to go back green after a massive wreck in the turn number three that involves several big name drivers. It'd be easier, honestly, to list drivers that weren't involved in this previous caution. But as it stands now, 29th on down are all out of the race 
However, as for Dan Mattiello, Jordan Stout, and Jason Albert, all three of those drivers are one lap down, despite being involved in that caution as well. While other drivers like Nick Sand, Alex Hintafalo, and Lipsy, who are also involved in that caution, are still on the lead lap, but of course, did, ha did get damaged during that wreck. But as for your top three, currently the 53 of Random J is first, followed by Daniel Voiles in the 01, and the 20 of Brady Carruthers. But as the pace truck heads down pit road, we're going to be back under green here in the 2024 Firecracker 400. Good start by both Random and Voiles going into turn number one with Carruthers behind the 53 and the 24 behind the 01. But once again into turn number two, the inside is going to get that strong run with Random clearing Voiles for the lead. Continuing down the back show, you can just see how slow Jordan Stout, Santa Valla, Jason Albert, and all those wrecked cars are compared to the rest of the field. So Random gets forced to the outside by Carruthers. Those two are going to be side by side for the lead into turn number three. This guy with Taylor being forced to the middle by Caleb Rose as a three wide for third. Keyshawn Richardson also gets forced up to the outside by Ryan Wilson, nearly hitting the wall at that time by the 24 as off turn four. Brady Carruthers back to the lead here at Daytona. We know Random is trying to hang on the best he can on the outside of lane. It's how Rose and Carruthers are side by side for the lead. Skyler Taylor still stuck in the middle three wide, this time of Cowan Baker to their outside. And Random J to the outside of Joe T now fast approaching in the middle. As looks like into two, Rose will clear Carruthers for the lead as he moves to the inside in front of Cowan Baker. And now continuing down the back story, Rose is going to move up the track right between both Baker and Carruthers as his pack is once again back to three by threes. There's contact with Jack Haas and Joe T. Two teammates there as Ryan goes Joe T into the wall in front of Daniel Voiles. Keyshawn Richardson trying to save in the 24th, both Matt Taylor and Whoopsie getting involved in the last minute. And wow, just like last year, that did not take long at all to see our second caution here tonight in the Firecracker 400. Uh, with perhaps probably the biggest name involved being Daniel Voiles, as he was up front for much of the second half of this race up until this point. But now was a good chance that his race could be done for the night. Whoopsie, of course, also involved. And as well as Joe T, as he has heavy rear end damage to his car as well. And I believe Ryan Wilson may have some damage as well in the 48. We know at that time by Oxford, Caleb Rose was the leader, followed by Colin Baker in the 21, and Jordan Forbes in the 61. But anyways, let's take a look at the instant replay to see what caused our second caution here tonight. So much like our first caution earlier tonight, this happened coming down the back straight away and going into turn number three. So it looks like Jack Cos may have gotten some contact by Johnny Hernandez, sent him to his teammate Joe T. Both of them try to save it, then Joe T comes back onto the field right in front of Daniel Voiles. And with both Matt Teo and Lipsy also going to get caught up in this as well at the last minute. Now Ryan Wilson, I think, didn't get any damage from that just because he was hard on the brakes once it happened. and did a good job of mostly avoiding with signals from up above. Oh yeah, Johnny definitely gave Jack Cos a bad shove in his left rear that caused all this to unfold. Nowhere for Daniel Voiles to go. Keisha Richardson with some damage to his right front. And of course, both Matt Teo and Lipsy coming in at the last minute. On board of Joe T to see his point of view. Oh yeah, Haas was definitely the one that initiated that contact, sent him into Brendan Beal, and then back in front of Daniel Voiles, so who had absolutely nowhere to go. On board with Johnny Hernandez. Oh yeah, he definitely gave Haas a very, very aggressive push there. Unfortunately, neither of them got any sort of damage. Anyways, we're already back under caution here in the 2024 Firecracker 400. We'll be right back with you guys after this. Welcome back to the 2024 running of the Firecracker 400. We're about to go back green after yet another caution to happen down the back and into turn number three. This time it involved with the 0-1 of Daniel Voiles and the 8 of Joe T, as well as two other drivers who were involved in our first wreck earlier today, Dan Matteo in the 17 and the 9 of Lipsy. And unfortunately, all four of those drivers are done for the night and out of the race. But anyways, ice for your current top three, Caleb Rose in the 59 is first, followed by Callan Baker in the 21 and the 61 of Jordan Forbes. And of course, with these last two cautions being just laps apart from one another, 
and ate up about 10 total laps of green flag racing. And as the pace truck continues down pit road, we're going to restart this race with just six laps to go. This could potentially be the final restart here in the 2024 Firecracker 400 as we're back on the green. Great restart for Cowan Baker that time by on the outside. But Jordan Force is fast approaching into turn number one as Rose and Baker are going to remain side by side. Looks like into two, Rose will clear Baker for the lead as that help from Forbes is going to pay off. Down the back, Taylor's going to move to the inside in front of Haas as Johnny Hernandez again makes contact with Jack Haas, but this time around they're going to save it into turn number three. Now I would imagine Haas is probably frustrated with Hernandez nearly wrecking him again, but at the same time, it is go time. If you're towards the middle or back of the pack, you have to make a move now as time is quickly running out. Coming to the trial and coming to five laps to go. Caleb Rose still maintains the lead with Skyler Terrell back up the second and Haas in third. You know, in the midst of all of this, Calvin Baker went from being side by side with Rose to being stuck towards the outside of the racetrack and rapidly losing ground in the 21. But into turn number two, Mustard's pack is still in a two by two formation as Baker continues to lose ground as he's the only car even up in the outside lane. Down the back, here's Taylor now looking to the inside of Rose for the lead. And despite neither driver having any help in their respective lines, they continue to be side by side into turn number three. There are several coin lines separating both Taylor and Rose from the rest of the field. This is going to more than likely cause the rest of the pack to catch right back up off turn number four. As his inside lane is quickly building with Johnny, Bubble, Anthony, and Al Random moving down. As all four of those drivers will be right behind Taylor coming to four laps to go. But now Taylor's going to get forced to the middle by Johnny as we're once again three wide for the lead into turn number one. And with Forrest and the rest of the outside lane moving down to the middle behind Taylor. And it's going to leave Rose and Haas as the only two drivers on the outside. On board of Anthony Hernandez down the back straight as he's on the inside right behind Bubble as he gives her a shove. As she's going to get that strong run going into turn number three as we're once again three wide for the lead. Looks like in the four, Bubble's going to have the advantage of both Taylor and Johnny as your current points winner is going to rocket to the lead here at Daytona. But now into the travel, Bubble's going to move to the middle in front of Taylor. Three laps to go this time by. I think Johnny and Taylor made some contact, but in the one, Anthony's going to go to the middle, right in front of Taylor, shove with them to the outside. And as he tries to move back down to the middle, he can't. Random J now the lead driver on the inside. No fall from Roberto Crown down the back. Sudaway Ram is going to maintain the inside while Bubble moves to the outside in front of Anthony. While his inside lane continues to form up once again into turn number three. Bubble tried to block Random that time by, but she stays on the outside, giving Random a huge run into turn number four. It's going to be side by side for the lead. And Random's car throughout the entire night has been so good in clean air, and he may have picked a perfect time to march back up to the front as you come to two laps to go this time by. And as I say that off the trial, crowd's going to force Random to the middle as we're once again three wide for the lead into turn number one. Forbes and Crowder is the there two drivers on the inside lane behind Crowd is into turn number two. Crowd will clear Random J for the lead. But now down the back, Crowd's going to shuffle to the middle in front of Random. Crowder's now peeking himself to the inside of Forbes as we're nearly four wide again. As a car change Forbes and Random, as they both nearly rack into turn number three. They both save it. Random down the middle as he's going to be side by side once again. What an incredible save by both Random and Forbes that time by. As they're both going to be three wide of Crowd for the lead off turn number four. Over 100,000 all on their feet as the field this time by sees the white flag. One lap to go here at the Firecracker 400. This is still anyone's race to win. And it's now going to move to the middle, trying to force crowd to the outside as they remain side by side for the lead into turn number one. Random shifting back down to the inside. Three wide ever behind the 53 as he moves down to the inside in front of Forbes off turn number two for the final time. And now down the back, Rand's going to move up the track right between both Taylor and Crown. But Rand's going to move back down to the inside quick as here's the inside lane fast approaching with Jordan Forrest and Crudder's into turn number three. Rand's going to get down in time. Forrest gets a strong run as they're nearly four wide again to turn three and four for the final time. 
Warriors have the advantage over Random off of four, but Random continues to fight back on the outside as he's still going to be side by side. A photo finish to the line. Oh, man. Oh, man. I, I can't tell who won that race. And PSL officials apparently can't tell either as they are reviewing the finish up in the booth. In the meantime, let's take a look at the incredible, incredible finish to end this year's Firecracker 400. So at this point, it's down the back of the way with two laps to go. Watch that red car. Taylor making contact with Forza's right rear, sending him up to random. With random coming down on him, trying to save it. But in the three, all three of them do manage to save it. And it really worked out in both random and Forza's favor. With random in the middle and Forza on the inside, both getting strong runs into turn number four. Briefly being three wide of crown. With random eventually clearing Forza, moving down to the inside. Remaining side by side after 31, coming to the light flag. Now, Random once again shift into the middle in front of Taylor. And now in the two, Ram's going to move down the racetrack, but not completely in front of Forbes. And then down the back, Random's going to move back up the racetrack, right between both Taylor and Crown. But here comes that strong run. Both Forbes and Carter's are going to get on the inside in the three as Riley Spurley, that time by nearly racked off the bumper of Brenda Beal. But he managed to save it. But through turns three and four, four is, is going to be three wide of random and crown before his adventure getting the advantage over the 53. But then into the trial vote, random moves back up the racetrack in front of crown on the outside and gets that strong grown to remain side by side with Forbes as those two are practically neck and neck to the line. Oh. Oh, I think we're hearing from PSO officials that they have declared a winner and that Jordan Forbes wins the Firecracker 400 in the newest, closest finish in channel history. One one thousandth of a second. And here's how close it was. Whoa! Oh my god, that close. But the interesting thing is, if he moved this footage up by just one second, <laughs> he's still practically tied. Now here's probably the best angle of this finish. One one thousandth of a second. Literally by inches. And of course, if you recall back to the last time we've had a finish this close on the channel, it was Jordan Stout and Nathan Stapleton back in Armour Digital in 2022 for the Golf Summer Series. And after two years, it's no longer going to hold the record as the closest finish for a points-paying race on this channel. And now, of course, Forrest being declared as the winner. He's going to come back on the racetrack and do some burnouts from the sold-out crowd. Obviously a huge, huge congratulations to Jordan Forbes and Beacon Mopar Racing. They are your 2024 Firecracker 400 winners. This is Forbes' second career win in both the channel and in the Palm Summer League as he won last year's summer kickoff at Coca-Cola. Anyways, let's take a look at the finishing results and point standings after tonight's memorable race. So here we go. Of course, Jordan Forbes wins the 2024 Firecracker 400 in the newest, closest channel finish in history. One one thousandth of a second. I don't know if we're honestly ever going to see a finish like that, that close anytime soon. Just absolutely incredible. And of course, with Forbes' win here tonight, is not only going to help him out in the point standings, but also Forbes becomes the second driver in channel history when both the Firecracker and the opening race of a summer series joining Richard Herman, or Lexi Herman now, as the only two drivers to do that in channel history. Meanwhile, as for Random, obviously an absolute heartbreaker for that team. They were this close to finally going back to victory lane in nearly three years on the channel. But unfortunately, we'll have to come another day, but at least on the bright side, Random was the highest finishing Pontiac and did win the most laps of 10 laps here tonight. So he does get additional bonus points here tonight. Meanwhile, a great run for Brandon Crudder tonight as he gets back-to-back -to -back top fives, finishing third here tonight. Or Skyward Taylor gets back-to-back -to -back top 10s, finishing fourth. And fifth is Roberto Crown Jr., who of course started second this race as he also gets back-to-back -to -back top fives. Well, a nice rebound for Bubble Pop in 18 as she'll finish sixth in her first Firecracker 400 start. Meanwhile, a good rebound for Anthony Hernandez after wrecking out on lap number two during the last race. He'll finish seventh here tonight, where Riley Spurley finishes eighth. The defending series champion, Brendan Beal, finishes ninth, where Johnny Hernandez, the pole sitter, will round off the rest of the top ten. And as for 11th through 20th, Nathan Stapleton, who of course was very, very aggressive in the early portion of this race, 
Solid finish for him. We finished 11th. Caleb Rosen 12th. Easily the best finish for him this year. As all of his finishes up until this point were all but below the top 20. Meanwhile, summer kickoff winner Jose Angel Gutierrez will settle with 15th. While Ryan Wilson in 17th, who again did not get any damage during that wreck with Joe T and Daniel Voiles, came down pit road before the green flag came out. And because of that, had the misfortune of restarting right behind all of the damage cars. And he never had an opportunity to catch back up with the rest of the lead pack. And finally, in 20th, you see last year's Firecracker winner, Nick Sant. Of course, got caught up in that first ca that first big caution. Didn't get the worst damage, but it killed any chances for Nick Sant to defend his Firecracker win. Then 21st through 30th, another tough finish for Dylan Matthews in the 49 as she was caught up in that massive wreck in lap number 26. And the same goes to Seth Alex and Deval in the 99 as he came this race third in the point standings. Meanwhile, Jason Albert, Jordan Flores were all one lap down but still on track. While 25th on down, all went to the garage area starting with Daniel Voiles, Joe T. And one of those drivers also listed here is Lipsy who has had absolutely bad luck here in Daytona. has been involved in wrecks. And just about every time we come here, it's a tough break for the nine team. Take a look said for his team owner, Brad Dream in the six. And as for the bottom five drivers, Matt Burnett finishes 31st despite starting fifth. He got caught up in that aforementioned lap number 26 wreck. While Philip Torres in that exact same wreck went barrel rolling several times in that car. See Matthew Hill second in points, finishing 33rd. Ross McTrain, he won it from Meadowlands just a few weeks ago, will finish 34th. And 35th is the other Beacon Mopar driver, despite Beacon Mopar winning the Firecracker tonight. Their other driver, Kyle Sustry, will unfortunately finish 35th and dead last here in the summer's biggest race. And now for the point standings after race number four, and just like at the last race at the Meadowlands, the entire points picture has completely changed. And so, far, but one thing that hasn't changed is Bubble Pop, who still maintains the point lead, this time seven points over the new second place driver, Jordan Forbes in the 61. While Riley Spurry is back inside the top five in points in third, behind by 11. Alex Santavala down the fourth, behind by 19. Dylan Matthews behind by 20 in fifth. Roberto Crown makes his first appearance inside the top 10 in points, behind by 24. And it's actually tied with Jason Albert for that spot, but due to Crown's two top fives, as opposed to Albert's none, we have the advantage over to 84. Patrick Miller also is at the top 10 in points for the first time this year, thanks to his dual win, bottom by 26. Anthony Hernandez also back at the top 10 in points, bottom by 27. But Jose Angel Gutierrez behind by 28. We'll round off the rest of the top 10. So next up is the second to last race here this summer, which also happens to be the 100th race on the channel. And that's, of course, going to bring us to Paris, France for the UPS Summer Special. That will be on the channel just days before the Summer Olympic opening ceremony on July 22nd at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, barring any delays. But as always, y'all, thank you guys for watching this race. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time.